So you've just been diagnosed with lupus, and you may be wondering, what do I need to know? Lupus is a lifelong autoimmune disease that can affect many parts of the body, but most commonly causes muscle and joint pain, fever, and skin rashes. These symptoms are probably the reason why you went to see your doctor in the first place. But let's rewind. First, what is an autoimmune disease? Everyone has an immune system, and the immune system is important because it helps fight off threats to your body, like infections. When the immune system is working properly, immune cells, like B cells, will patrol through your body looking for foreign invaders, also known as foreign antigens. When these foreign antigens are found, B cells produce antibodies to flag the invader and alert the immune system to send attacker cells, like T cells, to destroy it. This is why when you're recovering from a cold, you often have a cough or stuffy nose as those are signs that your immune system is hard at work. However, in autoimmune diseases, your immune system's detection system does not work as expected. Your B cells start flagging parts of your own body's tissues and organs as foreign invaders. Your self antigens found in your body's tissues and organs are flagged by autoantibodies and attacked by your immune system. This leads to inflammation throughout the body, and you may experience fatigue, fever, muscle aches, joint pain, skin rashes, and organ damage. There are over 80 types of autoimmune disease, many of which have similar symptoms. Some autoimmune diseases that look similar to lupus are rheumatoid arthritis and rosacea, where patients may have joint pain and skin rashes, which are also common in people with lupus. With lupus, this inflammation can also lead to blood clots and problems with your kidneys, lungs, heart, and brain. Anyone can get lupus. It happens in women, men, children, and even newborns. It is more common in women than men, with around 90% of lupus patients being women of childbearing age. In most cases, the cause of lupus is unknown. A combination of your genetics, so genes you inherited from your parents, and your environment may trigger the onset of lupus. Most of all, lupus can look different for everyone and can change over time. You may experience flare-ups of lupus symptoms and you may have times of remission where your symptoms are diminished. Let's stop and check to make sure we're all on the same page. Do you understand the difference between an autoantibody and a normal antibody? What about the difference between a self-antigen and a foreign antigen? Pause the video to think this through. Let's take a look at the answer. The difference between an autoantibody and a normal antibody is what they flag for the immune system to attack. And the difference between a self-antigen and a foreign antigen is where they are found. So autoantibodies will flag your self-antigens found on your own body's tissues and organs, and normal antibodies will flag the foreign antigens found on foreign invaders like viruses for your immune system to attack. There is no definitive cure for lupus but there are many different types of medications that can help reduce your lupus symptoms. Your doctor may recommend any combination of medications to manage your symptoms and offset potential side effects. We're gonna take a closer look at five of them. First, we're gonna talk about antimalarials, like hydroxychloroquine, also known as Plaquenil. You may be wondering how antimalarials can be used to treat lupus. Well, generally, antimalarials work to reduce autoantibodies, which is a key feature of lupus. By reducing this, it reduces pain, inflammation, flare-ups, and skin rashes. However, there are some side effects that to consider. The most prominent side effects are eye problems, causing retinal damage. Other problems can include stomach pains and digestive issues, like nausea and vomiting. Next, we're going to talk about steroids. Steroids can decrease the activity of overactive immune cells like B and T cells. This reduces inflammation and the severity of symptoms. You may have heard of steroids in the context of athletes trying to improve their performance. These steroids are referred to as anabolic steroids and they are different from the steroids used to treat lupus, which are corticosteroids and glucocorticoids. The most common steroid used to treat lupus is prednisone. Now there are a few ways that steroids can be taken. It can be taken through pills, through injections, or through a skin cream or gel used for the skin rashes. Unfortunately, steroids come with a variety of different side effects, which include swelling, weight gain, and sleeping problems. Long-term use of steroids can also lead to an increased risk of more severe health problems like infections, osteoporosis, meaning weak or brittle bones, and diabetes. Next on the list are NSAIDs, otherwise known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. These are the most common type of medication used to treat lupus. You may have already used NSAIDs in your day-to-day -day life with ibuprofen and naproxen. 
Similar to steroids, these medications reduce inflammation and pain by reducing the chemicals in the body that cause the inflammation. NSAIDs are used for many other conditions. Beyond the over-the-counter NSAIDs like ibuprofen, there are also prescribed NSAIDs like celecoxib and indomethacin. Acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol, is not an NSAID. While it can help ease pain and lower fevers, it does not treat inflammation or lupus symptoms. Although NSAIDs are commonly used, there are some side effects. Stomach pain and ulcers are particularly common with this medication. To avoid or mediate these side effects, there are some steps that you can take. First, you can take NSAIDs with food to help prevent stomach pains. Second, you can take the medication prescribed by your doctor to help with digestion issues like proton pump inhibitors and over-the-counter antiacids, like Tums, which will help with the protection against ulcers. Next, we're going to talk about immunosuppressants. As their name suggests, these medications work as suppressors of the immune system, and each immunosuppressant works slightly differently and treats different lupus symptoms. One common example is methotrexate, but there are others. The downside of these types of medications is that they can make it harder for your body to fight off infections. Steps should be taken to protect yourself from infections if you are taking an immunosuppressant. Things like washing your hands often, or cleaning and protecting your wounds and cuts, staying up to date with your vaccines, and avoiding people who might be ill or have a cold or transmissible virus. In addition, there are some side effects for each individual drug that could occur with their use. For example, they could potentially damage some of your organs, like your liver, or they could raise your risk of cancer. Finally, we're moving on to monoclonal antibodies, otherwise known as MABs. This is one of the newer therapeutic approaches for treating lupus and falls under the category of biologics. Biologics include any medication that comes from a biological source. In the case of MABs, they are made in and collected from living cells and then processed into medication. But really, how do these MABs work? MABs are designed to target the specific parts of your immune system that are overactive and lead to the inflammation associated with lupus. So, they reduce your lupus symptoms by reducing this inflammation. There are two types of MABs that have been approved for lupus treatment. One of them is called belimumab, also known as Benlista, and another is called Anifrolumab, also known as Cefnello. These two MABs can be administered using either an infusion or an injection. However, these medications do come with their own side effects. This can include nausea and diarrhea, fever, trouble sleeping, arm and leg pain, migraine, headaches, and increased risk of infections, including shingles. All in all, there are a lot of medications that can be used to help treat the symptoms of lupus. You and your doctor can work together to determine the best therapeutic approach for you. Let's stop and check to make sure we're all on the same page. Do you remember how all of these medications generally work to treat lupus? What do they have in common with each other? Pause the video to think this through. Let's take a look at the answer. The medications work by treating your lupus symptoms. The majority of these medications decrease overall inflammation. Now we're going to talk about an exciting new research study that was completed in 2022 that is looking to cure lupus rather than treating just its symptoms. Unlike the medications we just discussed, this study uses CAR T-cell therapy to reboot the immune system. Researchers from a German university have successfully driven five seriously ill lupus patients into remission using this approach. CAR T-cell therapy is highly customizable and uses patient T-cells that have been engineered to target and destroy a specific group of cells. The goal behind this therapy is to reboot the patient's faulty immune system and replace it with one that doesn't produce the harmful autoantibodies. To do this, the researchers engineered CAR T-cell therapies that were specific to a protein present on the rogue B-cells in lupus. Interestingly, this exact approach has been used successfully and has been approved to treat some types of leukemia. The results of this study showed that patients entered remission within three months of receiving a one-time dose of CAR T-cell therapy. Their symptoms faded to the point that they no longer required any of the medications they were previously on, like the ones we just discussed. These patients actually remained in this state of drug-free remission for as long as 17 months. The researchers found that after the treatment, the patient's B cells came back and were now working correctly. This means that the immune cells were no longer incorrectly flagging the patient's tissues and organs as foreign antigens. 
This showed that CAR T-cell therapy can indeed reboot the immune system. Of note, the five patients who received this therapy reported little to no side effects over the course of the trial. So although further study in larger groups of lupus patients is required, and it's still too soon to say how many patients would benefit from this therapy, the initial results from this research is extremely hopeful and promising. I know that seemed like a lot, but let's recap what we covered today. You should now have a better understanding about what lupus is, what medications are currently available to you, and what might become available to you in the future. If you are interested in more information, please check out some of these resources. We hope we were able to answer some of your questions about lupus today. Thank you so much for watching.